Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Health Talk. I am Peter Christian. That's John King over there. Good morning, John. Good morning, Peter. All right. And, uh, of course, to get it out of the way, how about them, Grizz? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to say it. Joining us in studio, Dr. Brad Picard, who is no stranger to this program. Good to see you again, sir. Good morning. How are you? Just great. Thanks the, for having me. How, how was your weekend? Doing pretty good? Nice weekend. That's quite so far. Okay. So the reason we're here today is to talk a little bit about uh, bariatric surgery. If I may just read your bio a little bit here. Uh, Dr. Brad Picard, the general surgeon, been serving Western Montana for 25 years. It is a full range of general surgery, including bariatric surgery. He's the trauma director for Providence St. Patrick Hospital and trauma director for the entire state of Montana. Holds teaching appointments at the University of Montana and the University of Washington School of Medicine. Additionally, chief medical correspondent for KPAX from 2006 to 2012. So with that official welcome, hello there. So so let's talk about, bar- for those who are maybe just arrived from Mars <laughs> and don't know what bariatric surgery is, what's it all about? Weight loss surgery. Uh, it's a tool for folks who are 100 pounds over ideal body weight or more to get healthy. Uh, the degree of weight loss that they need to do is far above what a regular diet would would yield them mm-hmm. now now there is a misconception when when folks who come in for bariatric surgery that it's some sort of a failure it's like a last resort it's not is it no uh, you, people that are over uh, 100 pounds over ideal body weight their weight they're wired differently mm-hmm. than the average person uh, somebody with a you know body mass index of 25 that's normal stature they could not begin to eat themselves up to a sure. body mass index of 40 or 100 pounds or more over ideal body weight. Our patients are just wired differently. Um, they don't have normal satiety mechanisms. They have genetics that put them at a disadvantage. It's lots of different factors in each individual. It's multifactorial. It's no. not just pushing the plate away. Sure, exactly. So, so for, for folks, I, I know plenty of folks who are very large, but, uh, but, I mean, they look at their, their blood pressure is okay. Everything else seems to be okay. They're just really big people. Now, there's a difference between being just a really structurally big person and being obese, right? Well, yes, uh, that's well, true. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. But uh, body mass index, a way to quantitate somebody's stature without having to say six foot two and 250 pounds. A body mass index of 40 or greater, that's 100 pounds over ideal body weight or more. If you don't have high blood pressure, if you don't have diabetes or sleep apnea, and you don't do something lasting and sustained, you're going to catch those things. I don't care how healthy you say you are. Okay. So so those things are down the road just to maybe... That's the future. A few months, few years down the road. Okay. If that is not addressed. Correct. Okay. So, So if you would just... Real quickly, without getting into the, the details, just what is bariatric surgery? How, how does it work? What's the mechanism? What do you do when, when you uh, perform the surgery? Well, the surgical tools we create, which are primarily sleeve gastrectomy and gastric bypass, the whole idea is I get full quickly. That's the main mechanism. We create a new small stomach. Now, there's other mechanisms as well, but the key one is I can't eat a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so the whole idea is to structurally make the stomach smaller so that it, you get to a point where you say, well, I, I literally can't eat anymore, right? That, that's the main point of each surgery. I get full quickly. Okay. And so uh, how, how successful is this? I mean, uh, uh, do people who are used to you know, sitting down at a large dinner and putting away a lot of food, do they naturally feel more full or do they still have a yearning to eat more? Well, initially, people completely lose their sense of hunger, which is great okay. for you know, the first six months. Uh, but then the hunger, hunger comes back, but they get full quickly at the end of a year. If I went out to eat with one of my patients, I wouldn't expect to notice a difference in the way they eat unless I really watch them. Mm -hmm. Ah, they don't eat a whole lot. Okay. Just less. They eat normally, just less. Sure. All right. So at at, at what point is there there a danger 
when people uh, get to that point and begin to start to consume more and more? Is is there a way you as the doc? Because one thing we talked about before the show is that you really want to see your patients for life. I mean, once you've had bariat- bariatric surgery, it is a life-changing procedure, right? The surgery is a key component of the whole process, but it's just the point of the spear. Okay. Um, it's the program that works. It's a motivated, educated patient. It's technically perfect surgery. It's great follow-up with nurses and dietitians and seeing each other once a year forever. Okay. So so when, when, when someone decides, okay, I've had it, I've tried all the weight loss, I've, tried, I've read every book, I've tried every diet, I've tried the Atkins, you name it, I, I'm finally really serious because I'm worried about my health. I, at what point does someone say, I need to get bariatric surgery? Is this something that we need to see a doctor first before we decide about? No. Um, well, qualifications for weight loss surgery, a body mass index of 35 or greater already with diabetes or high blood pressure, or 40 or greater, period. Mm-hmm. And, that, and 40 is 100 pounds over ideal body weight or more. But at that point, Yes. And we offer a seminar a couple times a month, um, have people come in. We like them to refer themselves. Sure. All right. So, so what, when someone comes in for that first consult with you, what kind of a conversation do you have with them? Well, usually when I sit down with them one-on-one, it's a refresher course. These people have been thinking about it for a couple years. Right. They're very well informed. And then they come to our seminar. And we have a group session, question and answer. And by the time we sit down 101, I have the best people in the world to work with, the most motivated, the educated patients. It's a sheer pleasure. So when you have these seminars, do you have some some folks who have had the surgery to say, hey, uh, Dr. Picard did mine, and uh, look at me, I feel great, I've lost 70, 80 pounds, I'm doing really well, I'm exercising. Is there that kind of back and forth as well? Well, not really. There can be ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Usually that happens in support groups later. Okay, we're going to take a little break. Come right back. If you have a question about bariatric surgery, uh, give us a call, 721-1290. John will be happy to take your question. We'll pass it along to Dr. Picard. He's here for about another 20 minutes or so. We'd love to hear from you at 721-1290. Health Talk continues in a moment. And we're back on Health Talk. 721-1290 is our number. Dr. Brad Picard joining us. Of course, Health Talk brought to you by Providence St. Patrick Hospital. And uh, we're talking about bariatric surgery. You had mentioned at the outset that there are different kinds of bariatric surgery. Could you kind of go through those? What what are the differences? Well, again, the the main theme is restriction. I can't eat a whole lot at once. Um, Lap bands used to be a, a, a popular tool. That's a mechanical device that made a small stomach that was adjustable. Uh, Those things are still around. We don't do them very much anymore because they just don't have the results that the other tools do. Um, Laparoscopic gastric bypass uh, has been around since the 60s as an open surgery, now laparoscopic. Uh, It's primarily restriction, and uh, it has a great track record something for the last 15 years that's been gaining uh, popularity is a sleeve gastrectomy. It makes a long, skinny tube out of the stomach. We take out 90% of the stomach. Wow. But again, the idea is I can't eat a whole lot at once. They each have pros and cons uh, for a particular patient. So like like any surgery, no one should ever enter into this decision lightly, right? No, this is not something to decide one week and get done then. The, the next. This right. is a very calculated, considered decision. Uh, surgery is is risky. It's expensive. In our hands, we think it's very safe. Well, yeah, yeah. But um, it's not like hernia surgery. Well, let, well, let's talk about the, the whole idea of, of cost, because I know uh, many times in, in a health uh, situation, insurance will cover this, right? Many times it will. Uh, a lot of insurances do. Uh, some still don't. Okay, but but despite that, if someone if someone feels like you know my life is worth the cost of this surgery, especially if I see my friends that have had it, their lives have, have changed for the better. I'm just going to go ahead and get it done, right? What you know? What is somebody's life worth? Um, the cost of the surgery, maybe the uh, equivalent of a 
midsize import car. Uh, if you have high blood pressure, diabetes, you're going to pay for that surgery in three years just on decreasing the medicines that you're on. Right. Now, let me ask you, what, what effect will this bariatric surgery have on high blood pressure and diabetes? I mean, uh, I've, I've, have we have we had diabetes in folks in here before from, from St. Pat's. So once you have it, you have it forever. Will, will it diminish it? Will it uh, help it make it easier to control? How does that work? Yes, the short answer. But let me even go back a little bit. The reason to do this surgery is to get healthy. Okay. It's to get rid of or get better all these weight-related health problems that go along with our obesity or avoid them altogether. Mm -hmm. That's the point. That's the goal I share with my patients. Yes, weight loss has to go along with that. Okay. But it's a side effect. The goal is to get healthy. Um, but if high blood pressure, diabetes, 85, 90% of people will be on less medicine or will be off of it. A type 2 diabetic uh, on insulin, oral agents that comes in with a gastric bypass, a lot of times they leave the hospital on no medicines. Wow. High blood pressure is a little slower. To... That, now, that is, that is truly amazing, isn't it? I mean, it, it, was that a byproduct that you folks discovered as you began to do the surgeries? That, or, or, or was it just one of those pleasant, wow, look at this. Look what happened after we did the surgery. Well, I wish we could say we discovered that. But it's... <laughs> But this surgery's been around uh, a long time, so it's known. But it continues to be the next thing to magic I get to be part of. I love stopping bleeding. Right. I love taking out cancers. But being part of seeing people get healthy and get their lives back, it is just some of the best that you're able to be part of. So let's say somebody comes in, like you say, well over 100 pounds overweight, according to their body mass index, and they have this surgery. About how much weight do they lose, I mean, simply from the surgery, and then continuing on? It is possible to, to change your lifestyle and continue to lose weight, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I, at, at the outset, we establish goals. The goal is to get healthy. Um, that's the goal we share. If it was a certain amount of weight, the patient and I would disagree. We'd hate each other. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but if pressed, I expect most people to lose 50 to 70% of their excess weight. They're still overweight, but they're not with a body mass index of 45. It's 30. They're not morbidly obese. They're obese. Mm -hmm. They're healthy. Now, some people lose 100% of their excess weight, but that's not the benchmark. The goal is to get healthy. 50 to 70% is probably the average. Now, would you, would you say, when you say get healthy, is, is that a subjective or an objective uh, uh, platform there? Or, uh, what, what, do you, what do you say would be getting healthy means? Um, it's both of those things. It is being off or on less blood pressure medicine. It's being able to live my life to go elk hunting, mm -hmm. to play with my kids or my grandkids. It's all of those things. Okay. Now, what can, what can the family do for, from someone, uh, let's say a dad or a mom who's, at, who's having bar bariatric surgery, come home from the hospital? How does the family and, and the support you know, crew at work think, how, how do we help support them and help them to get and stay healthy? Because we care about them. Before any surgery, we verify that the support network is behind our patient. They have to be there to support them through the essential lifestyle changes that are necessary. Um, these people have been previously at a disadvantage. The surgery gives them a tool to make the lifestyle changes sustainable. To be healthy, all of us have to exercise regularly and eat healthy. Mm -hmm. Those are the lifestyle changes that have to be supported. So, so the kids can say, Dad, let's go for a walk, or Mom, let's, let, let's climb the M, or let's, you know, you know, rather than sitting around watching the football game, let's put our headphones on, listen to Mick Holine, <laughs> and we'll walk while we listen to the game. You know, things like that, right? Just, exactly. Yeah, so, so the, those things are, are uh, the support system is at least as important as, you know, uh, the decision to have the surgery in the first place. It's, it's the whole, whole process. It's the program that works. Surgery is an essential part of it but it's everything around that patient. All right. So, so the change that you see in people that have had this surgery, uh, uh, how, how do they feel about it? When, when they come out of the surgery and, and, and they look basically at their new body, you know, and, and they realize that, that my life has changed forever because of what, I, what I've just done, uh, what are their reactions when, when they begin to feel like, hey, this is, this is really going to work? 
Well, again, it is just very special to have patients coming in and sharing what they're able to do now uh, in terms of activities and in terms of enjoyment. Uh, I'm up and down hills uh, hunting for the first time in 20 years, Doc. All right. All right. Uh, but uh, right after the surgery, do you tend to get tired easily or are there some symptoms that we need to expect that are normal, you know, after a surgery of this sort? Any operation, you're tired. Mm -hmm. There's a discomfort of surgery, but whether it's a knee scope, a hernia repair, or a gastric bypass, gee, I'm tired. Yeah. Stamina is the last thing to come back. Right. We're going to come right back, and uh, we're not going to be tired. We're talking with Dr. Brad Picard, talking about bariatric surgery, and our lines are open. If you have a question, we'd love to pass it along to Dr. Picard. Our number is 721-1290, and this is Health Talk. Hey, we're back. This is Health Talk. I'm Peter Christian. John King's over there looking for your phone calls at 721-1290. Dr. Brad Picard joining us. So we've been talking about bariatric surgery there at uh, Providence St. Patrick Hospital. During the break, we were talking a little bit about some, some things that we need to keep in mind with the various types of surgeries that you talked about here, the sleeve and, of course, the gastric bypass, about some dietary restrictions that we necessarily need to take. So what, what can you tell us? Well, there's um, pros and cons of each surgery. Uh, each surgery is designed to have me eat less. I get full quickly. But beyond that, uh, the gastric bypass, uh, the way we reroute the uh, intestinal continuity, these people, uh, they don't like drinking, eating high sugar, high fat. They experience a phenomenon called dumping syndrome that makes them feel really bad, that keeps them honest. Uh, a sleeve doesn't have that effect. They could drink a milkshake and not get sick. Uh, sleeve gastrectomies, uh, we don't reroute the intestine. They don't have the malabsorption of certain vitamins and minerals that occur when we do a gastric bypass. Gastric bypass patients, they're on vitamins and minerals for the rest of their days. Multivitamin, sure. some iron, yeah. some calcium, something we all ought to be doing. It's pretty minimal. Uh, a sleeve gastrectomy is a uh, operation that somebody that has bad heartburn already probably doesn't want. It'll make their heartburn worse. A gastric bypass, great operation for heartburn. Now, what, what about if when I go to, into the break room and there's there's the soda machine, and I, I've been craving a Pepsi or craving a, a, a Coke, and I've, I've had my surgery, what, what <laughs> that's probably not a good idea, right? Yeah, you wouldn't like a carbonated <laughs> beverage with either one of these surgeries. The right. idea is to make a new small stomach when that carbonation hits body temperature, it's released. Oh, that's uncomfortable if I have a stomach the size of a ping pong ball. And I'm sure these are things you go, oh, I'm sure at post-op or, or, or even as you have your pre, uh, uh, you know, your, your pre-operation, pre-surgery consultation, you say, okay, here's a list of things if you want to be comfortable, <laughs> you might want to stay away from, right? We have, that preparation starts well ahead of surgery, as you say. Mm -hmm. And there's a little bit of difference between a sleeve gastrectomy and a, a bypass in terms of their uh, instructions. But we take our patients through that and we encourage them listen to what we say, not what your buddies tell you that have had these surgeries. Right, right. Well, now tell me, uh, it's, it says here that, that not all general surgeons do this type of surgery. It takes special training. So uh, what, what kind of special training did you get to, to really get really good at this? Um, we, um, well, as a general surgeon, you've experienced it in training. But when St. Pat's decided to build up this program in 1999, I went back uh, and uh, trained with uh, one of the leaders in the field, uh, as did my partner, Dr. Swanick. And we've probably been around the country each uh, operating with a half dozen uh, very renowned surgeons each. Uh, there's not much uh, else in general surgery mm -hmm. that entails that kind of uh, it's very education. Specialized. It's very and specialized. these individuals, when we first started doing these various cases, they came to Missoula and walked us through these. Right. But to date now, we've done probably oh, 12, 1,500 of these. We've got about a minute left in our time together. So uh, if you would, just real quickly, tell our listeners who, who could benefit from this surgery. Well, who could benefit from it is somebody who is ready to make the change. Uh, people with a body mass index of 35 or greater or with 
diabetes or high blood pressure or anybody 40 or greater. But basically, it's the time that their weight is starting to affect their health. Morbid obesity is a lifelong, life-threatening disease. And unless you do something lasting and sustained, you're going to catch diabetes, high blood pressure, being more and more miserable and live 10 to 15 years less than you would otherwise. Right. So if you want to, if you want to stay alive, this is a good time to call Dr. Picard, right? Absolutely. All it's right. a long, you know, long-term case of appendicitis, maybe. <laughs> okay. If you don't do something, right. it's going to get you. Exactly. So how, how about some contact information? Where, where do we go to get this information? Uh, the easy way, uh, our bariatric clinic, uh, 329-5866. All right. It's a pleasure. Thank you, doctor. Thanks. Always good to see you again. Great to see Fountain you. Fountain of information. We appreciate it. And uh, Health Talk will be back with us again next Monday. Hope you'll join us then.